The first time I remember hearing a Dolly Parton song start to finish was in the triage room of a hospital as I waited to be admitted to a drug rehabilitation program in West Los Angeles. I was 14. It was 1988, and Dolly and Kenny Rogers were singing 1983's Islands in the Stream across LA's Coast FM. I knew her voice, of course. It would have been hard to be anywhere near a radio or television in the last 50 years without getting to know Dolly's warm, clarion soprano. But while I grew up on folk songs, basically country for blue states, music like Dolly's was often scorned in my parents' home and by my friends. My friends and I spent our time chasing down heavy metal bands on the Sunset Strip and would not have given Dolly the time of day. Many people of my generation, or at least those born outside the reign of country radio, first knew of Dolly as a straight-talking goofball in The Tonight Show, a set of giant tits, someone your grandma got a kick out of, someone who, my father would say with derision, was, quote, famous for being famous. Meanwhile, Dolly had been churning out hits for decades, possessed of a preternatural talent for writing and for singing authentic emotion into every song. Class and gender stereotypes could not and would not obscure her absolute genius or stop her from going where she wanted to go. I welcomed the stay at Glen Recovery Center. If I couldn't just be given an entirely new self, at least I wanted to make it clear to the world that the one I inhabited was wrecked. Being in rehab seemed like a rubber stamp to that effect. Less fond of cocaine and whiskey than of the exhilaration of forgetting, I craved the fresh environment. My parents filled intake forms, and I was asked to create a list of people I approved to visit me. I sat with the lined sheet of paper on my lap, even though I knew I didn't want to see anyone. Outside, on Pico Boulevard, the Santa Ana winds blew through the tops of palm trees visible from the windows of the triage room. I could hear the traffic flow east toward the tall, vacant buildings of downtown after dark, and west toward 20th Century Fox Studios and eventually the Pacific Ocean. It was a relief to abandon whatever promise I'd held as a curious, shy girl in my brother's hand-me-down Sears dungarees and a cherished strawberry shortcake turtleneck shirt. I'd worked hard since then to convince the outside world to join me in giving up on my potential, but Dolly's voice from the hospital ceiling speakers held a different kind of promise than that which I'd failed to meet. It was a release, a renewal, euphoric. When I heard Dolly's voice over the four-plus minutes of Islands in the Stream, I knew I needed to hear it again. Though it would be a few months before I purchased a Greatest Hits cassette tape from the bargain bin at a Thrifty's Drugs, the multifaceted clarity of her voice hooked me in